In this episode, I have some huge news. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? It's Michael Sana. Welcome back to the Sea and Land Fitness Podcast, uh, brought to you by Sea and Land Fitness. That's this company, Honey Badger, little pirate logo. Um, go over there if you want to check out uh, what we got. We'd love for you to go over there and check out what we've got. Um, we've got hats, we've got shirts, uh, Garmin watches, all that kind of stuff. All of the things that you need um, to make your uh, your workout experience uh, super fun and challenging. And you become a part of the Honey Badger Nation. So uh, go on over there and check it out. All right. Before we get started, before we get into it, I have to give you guys some enormous news um, I took my exam for TSACF. Now, some of you may not know what that is. So we have an organized, so being a, I'm at, uh, the university of Florida, um, getting my master's in applied physiology and kinesiology. So I work in the strength and conditioning, fitness, uh, sports psych space. Um, and one of the primary, I guess you would call them like uh, academic trade organizations, um, governing bodies of what we do, is uh, is the NSCA. That's the National Strength and Conditioning Association. And they have a strength and conditioning uh, certification that's the gold standard for um, academic and professional, like professional sports Um and that's the CSCS, and that's the uh, Certified Strength and Conditioning Coach. Um, I probably got that wrong. Um, but they have another certification that before I went down this road, I really, really wanted to get. Before I even knew what CSCS was. Um, I wanted to get what was called the TSAC, the TSAC slash or hyphen F. Um, and that is the tactical strength and conditioning facilitator. And it is primary. It primarily works with military populations, uh, firefighters, cops, wildland firefighters. We actually learned about that, like smoke jumpers and stuff like that. Um, but coming from a military background, I really wanted, you know, the combat arms. I was infantry um, it, when I was in the army. Um, coming from that background, for me, that was the gold standard. Um, I had always struggled with... <sighs> So it's weird in the combat arms. So I'm going to give you a, a, a little short history. Um, so when I first joined the Army, and actually, so just to clarify, I was in the Navy for six years, um, and then the uh, September 11th happened, and I, I wound up going into the Army um, and in the, into the infantry. Um, and I did that for four years. And when I had first joined the Army, there was this, the, the concept on conditioning and the concept on the infantry soldier was still similar to that uh, 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 going all the way back to World War II, Korea, Vietnam. And that it, it, it was that of the grunt. You know what I mean? Um, the soldier was the grunt. We were the, we were the person who just, you know, 
hump long distances, did what we, we were the guys in the movies with the dirty faces. Um, they always show them with dirty. Fa- and what's crazy about that is that when you're in the infantry, your face winds up filthy, your hands wind up fa- all, uh, cause you're out in the field for like ever. So I'm going to have a sip of coffee. Hold on. Peter Madera, that's for you. Um, so while I was in the army, and I was only in for four years, but it was when the global war on terror kicked off. Um, there were a lot of very forward-thinking individuals who developed the concept of the military athlete. And they saw that the things that we were doing stretched the physiological and psychological systems of our bodies to extremes. And... They were starting to look at us like we were athletes. You know what I mean? Um, A lot similar to the lines of, I would say, triathletes, you know, multi-event sports where you were doing uh, a lot of different, you you were taxing a lot of different energy systems. This, of course, transformed this warrior athlete transformed into something that I think most of you all know about, and that's CrossFit. Um, CrossFit, one of the people who was, uh, who was instrumental in that was Dave Castro and Jocko Willink, uh, Navy SEALs got a podcast, really, really great guy. Um, he is a big proponent and actually has a gym in Southern California that has a huge CrossFit, um, footprint in their gym so so it's really interesting how they were starting to look at um the the combat armed soldier you know the marine the navy seal uh the the infantry or or any in the army it it could be a number of combat arms um you know your forward observers your radio guys who go like way out and call for indirect fire, which is the stuff that comes from mortars and artillery. You're getting a a full lesson here. But anyways, the Pentagon was looking at us like we were athletes. And I guess we were. I mean, we we had to maintain fitness standards every year. Actually, with us, twice a year, we had to take our, what's called the APFT, and that yeah, it was the original push-ups, uh, sit-ups, and run tests that we had to take. We also had to do a body fat, uh, a body mass index, the pinch. We would get that um, from the calipers. And uh, then that started to develop where we were really, before, because we we're grunts, we just had to pass. That's all we cared about. But in this new environment of the warrior athlete, we started really trying to push those scores and to get better scores um, and and to just be the best that we could be. And what came of all this was a, a bunch of, of – and you can go in, you look up military fitness, you put that into Google, you'll come up with a ton of stuff. Um, you might even come up with CrossFit. Um but it's really become a booming section of uh, of the fitness industry, which is awesome. And I am now a a literally not just nothing against trainers, but I am not just a physical trainer. I am actually a fitness professional because I have it from a professional organization. Um, and I'm so excited. Alex Gomer, Gomer, uh, thank you so much at the NSCA uh, for all of your help. Uh, the, everyone at the NSCA, uh, the uh, the head of marketing, um, Scott. And, and I'm totally blanking right now, but that's okay. I'll get you. Um, I'm actually probably going to have him on the show. Um, but I'm really excited about it. And I'm really thrilled that... I, I literally am. I'm 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 almost kind of in shock because it was not easy. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it. Hold on. So 
I had set a date, and that was last Friday, to uh, to take this exam, and I was terrified. I had been using I so one of the courses that I took uh, taught by Doctor Harrison at uh, APK University of Florida. One of my professors that I've had a number of classes with, he taught a course called um, Tactical uh, Strength and Conditioning, and it was phenomenal. And it actually used the course, uh, the course book, uh, the course textbook that was used was the NSCA's Tactical Strength and uh, uh, Conditioning, like manual textbook. Um, that is the definitive guidelines for what's on the exam. And so I spent an entire semester going through that and learning. It was tremendous. I learned a ton. I, it's funny because having been in the military, um, having other people tell you about what your experience should be who are not in the military is an ego check. Not in a negative way, but it is definitely an ego check. And you have to steal yourself and kind of go, you know what? I'm here to learn. All right, cool. I I don't think what that person wrote is right, but I'm just okay. No problem. Um, and I've actually been able to expand my mind, change my mind on a couple of things, um, not be so rigid in my programming uh, for, for my exercises. I'm actually finding, um, I'm doing a ton of stuff that's outside of the, the hammer against a brick wall that I would normally use as my, uh, as my, and I mean that figuratively, uh, as my workout. Um, my workouts are a lot more well thought out, um, and well thought out according to, uh, you know, science-based principles, which, you know, you hear that all the time, this is science-based principles, but these are actually science-based principles that are applied um, to the methodology that is used for the TSAC, uh, the Tactical Strength and Condition Facilitator. So I've been, I've been adjusting all of that. Um, I, as some of you may know, I don't actually know if I did an episode on that. I got another certification with my same professor who you, Dr. Harrison's awesome. So I got uh, a certification from NASA, National Academy of Sports Medicine. Um, they do a bunch of uh, personal trainer certifications and a nutritionist certification, but they also do another one that is called the uh, Corrective Exercise Specialist, and I got that. And that actually just blew my mind. It, it takes a very biomechanical approach to looking at uh, dysfunction in, the, uh, in the, the balance in your system from right to left, front to back, um, top to bottom. Um, and again... I'm, 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 I'm merging all of these different concepts and ideas into one larger thing that is sea and land fitness, shameless plug right there. So, uh, it's funny because on the website for a long time, I've had, uh, these fitness plans that I was going to do for people who are coming into the military. Um, and I have been putting the brakes on them and had them as coming out soon for quite some time. And externally it could look like, well, he's just wasting his time. He's not doing anything. He's being lazy. No, the problem comes from, I keep getting new information. So I keep having to reevaluate what should be in this program. Um, and what's funny is now with this corrective exercise on one side and its approach to fitness and tactical strength and conditioning and its approach to fitness, I want to take a little bit of, uh, I, I want to relook at, at the, uh, 
at this fitness program that I'm developing and have it more aligned to those ideas versus and and what's interesting is I can look back and what do they say um sometimes you need a hammer but sometimes you need a scalpel um I'm finding that a lot of my old ideas like I said were a hammer against a brick wall versus a scalpel um but I'm very excited I'm so excited to be a part of this um, I've worked so hard and my wife, Stephanie and my son, Robert have been there through all of it. Um, I, I just, it's tremendous now about the exam. Um, I'm going to have a sip of coffee and then I'm going to tell you a little about the exam. So the exam is the textbook. What do I mean by that? I mean that all of the information on the exam, if you've read and digested, read and digested, don't just study, but digest. If you have read and digested the textbook, you won't have any problems. There are a ton of, and I'm going to say it straight up, shitball companies out there who will purport to help you, you know, get a, a passing score. I'm going to tell you there is one thing that will help you get a passing score, and that is understanding and digesting all of the information from the book. That's all there is to it. Now, there is a way to reinforce this information, and um, I used it, and I would highly recommend it, because it is a lot of information. It's a ton of information, um, and it can be unmanageable if you're not taking the appropriate time to integrate that knowledge into your long-term memory. Um, like I told you, I took a course and the course was instrumental because the course was the textbook. So how long does a, a course take? It's like anywhere from four to five months, right? Uh, college, college semesters, four to five months. So what do I recommend? I recommend that you take four to five months, schedule out, take four to five months, write it on a whiteboard, write it in a Word document, and give yourself chapters to go through, okay? Look, read the contents, read the introduction, the introduction inside the introduction. It's going to tell you about what all of the information is inside this book. It's broken up into different sections and take four months to digest this. Take five months to digest this. If you want, take six months to digest it. Now, once you have done, not the four to five months, but made the plan, that was a hiccup, sorry. Um, now what you do is you go on to the, the app store, or I think it's the iPhone store, and you get what's called pocket prep. Okay, Pocket Prep is an amazing app. My my professor, Dr. Harrison, he actually said, um, you should download it. It's great. It has tons of questions. All of the questions, they're not the questions from the exam, but they're ex questions on the source material. So what you're doing is you're reading the source material, and over this span of a number of months, you're taking these what are called quick 10 quizzes or um, timed quizzes. 
and you're reinforcing that knowledge by being given questions about that knowledge. Um, the questions, and I'm going to tell you straight up, the questions on pocket prep are not the questions on the exam. Some of them are. A couple of them popped up because some of them are like, of course, they would have to be questions um, asked. But in general, the questions on the TSAC exam are longer, more in-depth, and require an understanding of the context and subject. Okay? So it was not an easy test. I have been getting uh, hundreds on my, uh, what do you call it, my pocket prep exams. Really, really pushing, 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 nonstop, going back, rereading things I didn't understand. Um, I got a 77. Um, it, it's weird because it's graded differently than other things. So they have a number of questions that don't count that they're trying out for the exam and they want to see how um, they go over a specific, a specific period. Um, and out of 130 questions, I got 101 correct. Um, there were some, and, and it is, it's, it's a really, really difficult test because there were, there were questions on there where I was like, I have no idea. Holy cow. I, uh, this sounds right and feels right. Click. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, but that's going to be anything. That is one of the banes, the, uh, disadvantages of a multiple choice exam is you're going to have stuff. You may have learned something in a specific way, um, and when it's presented in a question this way, it becomes difficult for you to take the knowledge that you have and attribute it to the question. Um, it doesn't mean that they, there's anything wrong with the question. It's just the way that you may have, have learned the subject is, is a little more, is too rigid to fit the openness of the question. Um, wow, that was super academic and brainy. Um, but it was great. It was great. I felt good about the test. I didn't feel bad about the test while I was, you know, you're taking some exams and you're like, Jesus, I have no idea what this person's talking about. I've taken exams like that. Um, this was not the case. Sorry, another sip. Um, this was not the case at all. It was, uh, it was not easy, but with the knowledge in the textbook, um, basically downloaded into my brain and the reinforcement from pocket prep, which I'll put a link in the description below. Um, and you can download it, totally download it. Um, I found that I was able and capable of taking the test and felt confident about taking the test. And, and that confidence was reinforced by the grade that I got. Um, I'm going to tell you, uh, so, so my grade of a 77 is a perfect example of being in the military, thinking I know everything being given this TSAC, uh, information tactical strength and conditioning information and going, I don't know, this butts up straight against everything that I know, which told me that my original uh, knowledge base wasn't as significant as I had thought. So that's fine. That's okay. There's room to learn. And I did. And by learning the TSAC facilitator stuff, I enhanced my knowledge base. And by getting a 77 on the, uh, on the, on the exam, I'm able to pass, but I'm also humbled a little bit in, in understanding, wow, I guess I have a, a long way to go, but that's going to come with experience. That's going to come with, 
uh, socialization within the uh, within the fitness the tactical fitness space. Oh, you didn't know that? Check this out. Uh, you know there are going to be things that I can I can gift to other people and and knowledge that they can give back to me. Um, but I'm super excited. I am so stoked, and I'm proud of myself. And I did something uh, that I knew that I could do but was scared that I wouldn't be able to do. So um, I'm so jazzed. Now, though, this is not even done. Because um, as I said, I think in my last podcast, this is the summer of certification. So I got my corrective exercise specialist. I got my tactical strength and conditioning uh, facilitator. And then what are we in? We're in May right now, I think. Um, June is, uh, CSCS. So I'm going to have, um, some really monumental, uh, rock of Gibraltar type of, uh, type of certifications that are really going to help me stand out in the space. Um, so there, yeah. So I'm really excited by this. Um, I just want to finish up with uh, also telling you that there's going to be a lot happening this summer. I am <clears throat> so so with school with this past semester, it's been really difficult. So I had eye surgery uh, because I had um, cataract from all the way back when I was a child. It's called infantile cataract, and I had it in both eyes and. Uh, so from January until, um, I think it was the end, the end of March for, for about three months, I couldn't work out at all. And, uh, I gained a little bit of weight cause we all do, um, not much though. I think I gained like five pounds, um, but I had an injury before that caused me to gain weight and I was really starting to make headway. Um, but I kind of, I didn't go into a hole. Um, like there's this, this concept that I have of a motivation black hole. And that's when you get into it and everything just sucks it in. Um, I wasn't there. I knew I wanted to do stuff, but, um, I wasn't able to, I was actually under direct orders from the doctor. And I had to tell her that I said, you have to tell me that I'm not allowed to do stuff because I want this to work. Um, and thankfully I did what I was supposed to do. She did what she was supposed to do. And I have amazing eyesight. Um, 2015. What? Um, so, but I haven't been doing all the things that I needed to do. Not working out makes me not as motivated to do this podcast because it's fitness. You know what I mean? Um, but I have been incredibly motivated over the past past couple of weeks. Um, and I am not, you know, my master's program is coming to a close. I have all this knowledge, all this information, and it is my mission to give it to you in an applied format, meaning in a way that's not so it's sciencey. So it's science based, but you don't have to be a scientist to understand it. And that's one of the challenges that my profession actually has is that we, uh, tend to get robotic when we talk about this stuff. So, so, um, my commitment is to do an episode every week. Um, I may fall off. I may go on vacation. We're going to Orlando for my, uh, 20th anniversary. What? Um, but I'm going to try to do everything I can to get this to you and get, get as much information, um, to you as I possibly can about the world of fitness, uh, nutrition, sports psychology, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. That's all I got for you this week. So, all right. Uh, be good. Um, go honey badgers and, uh, check out cnlandfitness.com. All right. We'll see you guys, uh, next week. <laughs>